So I'm going to get started. Hi there, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, How to Buy Counter Depth and Under Counter Refrigeration. We have a great presentation lined up today, um, thanks to Steve. And with us is Steve Scheinkoff, the CEO of Yale Appliance, and Francesco Froyo, our general manager of our showrooms. Um, I am Sarah Silvestro, the content marketing manager. So we will be recording this presentation, and we will send the recording and the presentation to you afterwards. Please use the Q&A feature in Zoom. Um, to send over any questions that may come up and we'll have plenty of time for a live Q&A. So with that said, let's get started and Steve, the floor is yours. All right, thank you, Sarah. No problem. How to buy counter depths, how to buy counter depth and under counter refrigeration, lots of refrigeration. In fact, it's the only thing I'm gonna be talking about today. It's unusual that I would be the one talking about it because just last year I wrote a, I wrote a, a, a video and a blog post, three top reasons to never buy a counter refrigerator. It's been seen almost half a million times with 634 comments, mostly bad. 550 people love their counter depths and that's good, right? I've even had someone call me Bozo the Clown. Maybe it was a compliment because Bozo is a Bostonian. But really for the people that are, are set, especially for people that are building new houses, I want you to take a look, eight to 10 slides. Really think about how much storage you need, you know, if you have an island and how you place refrigerator. So with that in mind, let's get started at a very unusual place, my neighbors. They're still smiling, even though I moved in about six months ago, right next to them. Um, three of them, um, Suzanne, Ayel, and, and Zoe. And they actually renovated the kitchen two years ago uh, before they knew me. Um, did a pretty good job. Uh, G induction stove, sink right across the way in a kind of built-in refrigerator um, at the end, but it's really not. What they did is they built the cabinet forward so it looks built and so it looks like a counter depth. It's a good thing, this is this is actually, because it's a standard depth, this is 28 cubic feet. The counter depth version of this is 23. Now, Susanna works full-time, long hours. She shops on Fridays because she usually buys me grapes then. Um, but this is what a refrigerator looks like at 28 cubic foot. So what would that look like at 23? Okay, just keep that in mind for one second. Now let's go across the yard to my house. Um, I just rented this place and, and the refrigerator is more centralized. So if I built it out, it would look like somebody built a refrigerator out for no reason. Now, this is a Kenmore Elite. Um, this refrigerator, I estimate, is somewhere between 18 and 20 years old. Okay, it's because it's counter depth, this is 21.7 cubic feet. Now, I meal plan, which means I make salads and Sundays, and I have someone cook a couple meals. Uh, um, usually she comes in on Monday, Tuesday. This is what their refrigerator looks like on Wednesday. Now, this is just for two people, me and Kid Unicorn here, right? So if this was a family, the, certainly this refrigerator wouldn't be enough capacity, but just what are your capacity requirements? So let's... To answer that question fully, let's go back to the uh, some really some bad times. Twenty twenty, we couldn't sell any appliance, um, you know, in the first in the first half, except for these. I don't know if it, anybody remember, but I've been here for thirty six years. We never sold out of freezers. In fact, we've always had freezers in stock because you know, we don't hunt deer here in the, in, um, in 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 Massachusetts. So there's not a need for these big stand up or chest freezers. But um, we sold out of them um, so much so that. We actually bought these. These are black stainless steel. You shouldn't buy black stainless. It's another conversation. But Samsung was offering these a deal. We're selling these 25 cubic foot refrigerators, secondary refrigerators in black steel for $7.99, 25 cubic foot. We sold out of those. It got so bad that we actually sold these. We sell true, and you're going to see um, some true uh, refrigerators later in the presentation. We sold their commercial freezers at $3,000 a pop. So really, when you think of storage, when's the next emergency? Um, the next day, I put a zombie apocalypse in there. HBO's got a zombie special, it's just went for it. Or when the stores are running out of things and you wish you had more cubic footage, um, is counter depth, is a counter depth alone? Or we're going to get into point of use if you have islands uh, later on. What is your set? Really assess your storage. Now, again, probably shouldn't have said never buy a counter depth, but if you put it on the end, you're going to see that a lot throughout the presentation, right? You can build it out, it looks fine. If you put it in the middle, then certainly, or some, some person mentioned today in a galley kitchen with the doorways there, naturally, your, your, your counter, it, it calls for more of a counter depth. 
Okay. Now, pulling cabinets forward. Somebody says you should never do that. A contractor did say recessing a wall. You know, some of it might be load bearing. That might be difficult to do, but it's been done for years at the very high end. This is a built-in or uh, professional uh, built-in uh, professional counter depth refrigerator. Um, what the designer did here is they moved all the cabinets forward 28 inches so it looks integrated. We're going to get into professional versus integrated less uh, in the um, later in the presentation. But they made this look flat, whereas uh, regular freestanding and professional refrigerators, the door the door itself protrudes, just uh, just not the um, chassis of the refrigerator. Okay. Now, if you look at the refrigerator, this is like this is not central. And the best kitchens, I'm, I brought this one out of unretirement. This is my favorite kitchen on the internet. This is Drake, the rapper's kitchen. If you take a look, what is central here is the, um, is the stove in the sink, the two most used. I'm sure the dishwasher's on the left side of the sink. He may have point of use, and we'll get into point of use refrigerators later, um, somewhere in the island, but look where the main refrigerator is, right at, at, right at the end. So you really don't need to put the refrigerator central to your plan, okay? So up until now, because guess what? As I was writing this um, presentation, LG's introduced new counter depth refrigerators that are 27 cubic feet. Um, and how they did that is they made the door thicker to hold more. And they, the insula, they have new insulation, which is thinner. So they're able to move the cavity out a little bit. Now, whether it works or not, it's another story. But a 27 cubic foot counter depth, the biggest you can buy is 30 in a, in, a, in a standard depth. This may just blur and end any kind of debate between standard and counter depth. But that said, there are right now three kinds of counter depth refrigerators, really two and integrated. There's the freestanding type, which is a regular shallow refrigerator built in or professional or commonly known as professional with the compression on the top, emulating a commercial installation. And then you have the integrated, which is built into the cabinets. And we'll go through each. First one's freestanding. Price on these um, is somewhere between $1,500 to $5,000, depending on the options. Um, every brand makes, except for the, the, the premium brands, which are Sub-Zero, Thermidor, Gaginal. Sizes, remember, appliances fit cabinets, not the other way around. So when I say 36 inch, it's made to fit a 36 inch cabinet. These, uh, uh, you also have 36, 33, 30, and then smaller ones at 28 and 24, typically in top or bottom mount freezers. And, and the configurations, especially in French door endless, you have three door French door, four door French door, you have um, uh, Insta views, family hubs, four doors, uh, door with a door. And, and you've got really good technology. They've gone to twin evaporators, so the refrigerator and freezer ed doesn't commingle. So the warmer air doesn't get trapped in the frozen uh, refrigerator. You don't defrost as much. Your food should taste better, especially frozen food. You know, a door with doors. So you know if you have children, they touch a button and just go inside the refrigerator without opening the door. You have dispensers. All of the smart technology is as limited as smart is for refrigerator. I don't think people are adjusting the temperature from a, an app on their phone. It will tell you when to change the filter, and it will tell you when you leave your door open as well. Best ones to consider, there's a lot of good ones to consider. Here's the ones that we're going to be looking at in 2023. Bosch has two compressors, not just two evaporators like Sub-Zero. They have the stainless back because stainless absorbs cold better. Beko's got a very interesting story in a three or four door. They have blue lighting, and as crazy as it seems, uh, blue sunlight is blue, so it emulates sunlight, so it extends photosynthesis, so your fruits and vegetables stay longer. They have the that ever they have that ever fresh uh, drawer as well, um, and then you've got a cafe, which has a number of different colors, a number of different handles, um, and they've got the cured coffee system built in. SKS, which LG and SKS are the same company. We can get a really good refrigerator with the door and door. You get craft ice cubes, those big cylindricals that don't dissolve for fine liquor. They have a really interesting um, uh, two evaporator system. They have nine sensors. And then when you open the door, they have a cold vent. So it comes down so it doesn't change temperature when you open the door so much, especially in the summer. Professional built-in emulate um, the commercial. That's where they started. 
And basically the price of these started about $9,000 and, and go up from there. Brands, I, I actually like the brands because the, the, the most popular ones are family owned American companies like us. And you only have the larger sizes here, 30, 36, 42, 48 basic configurations, meaning you're only having side-by-sides, you only have uh, French doors and um, bottom freezers. Those are the only three. Here's we get a freestanding professional. They both hold temperature but you're looking at a 300 versus 800 pound refrigerator. Temperature settings a little bit better on the professional. The construction certainly is better. You have two compressors as the standard. Um, you know, the better ones will have uh, vacuum seals. So when you open it, uh, the air doesn't infiltrate as well. So it keeps food fresher longer. Uh, Subjero's has that nanotechnology shelving. So you spill some, it congeals the spill. So you're not cleaning grape juice for the next six months. Um, you have the stainless interiors because, again, all of them, you know, and all stainless steel will absorb cold better. You're looking at air scrubbers. Um, Sub Zero will have that ethylene gas as food spoil. The scrubber will, will, will scrub the gases off to keep food fresher for a longer period of time. But still, you know, they both have a temperature. Well, I, I just think the, the professional looks better. You can also panel it um, in, a, in a kitchen, which is an advantage as well. The best pros, again, these are some of my favorites. Sub-Zero, based in Wisconsin, family-owned. Um, you can panelize it, um, you put a glass door on it, or you can make it stainless steel. True is a very interesting company. They're the largest commercial family-owned uh, refrigerator company in the world, based in St. Louis. You can't panelize a True, but they have some really interesting colors. Uh, they have 13 of them. And then you can mix and match the hinges. This is white and brass. We show it in um, we show it in our Hanover store. Really interesting company. Um, all solid. Their products are made to be inside or outside. They're they're built that well. And here's another company, uh, Blue Star. Um, you may know them for their ranges, but they do manufacture really good columns and built-in refrigerators. Well, they have a thousand colors and ten different handle styles. If you don't like any of the thousand colors. Um, uh, you can you can send them a paint chip and they'll make it to your specifications. Unfortunately, I show this in stainless for whatever reason, but take a look left, that's that's their blue and brass. We show them in colors in the stores as well. And then Monogram. Monogram is uh, is now Chinese owned, but made in America. What I like about Monogram is, first of all, it's less expensive. They have a good rebate program, but they have that uh, very interesting crispers where you can set it to either thaw or chill, and it will do it automatically with like temperature on it. And they do a nice job with airflow. It comes from each shelf um, on down. Um, it's an interesting product, kind of limited compared to the others, but uh, less expensive, good rebate program, some interesting features as well. And then the Ruthers Viking makes them, uh, I think Decor still makes a few as well. Now, integrated is different. It's not really, people call it a counter dip that really isn't. It fits within a cabinet. So if it's installed properly, you won't be able to tell between a cabinet and the refrigerator itself. Now, every brand makes these. They don't on, um, on the professional because there's energy. Uh, the government has energy regulations that a lot of companies, um, their, their products can't meet. So they stop making them. Um, now, on these, you're on, on an integrated, you're looking at smaller sizes like 18, 24, and then you get your 30, 36. You have more configurations in that 30, 36 with double drawers, columns, different styles, and, and, a, and a good selection. Um, and the difference between professional and integrated is, um, first of all, looks-wise. One is more commercial and kind of in your face versus something that's really made to be hidden. You're looking at larger sizes, uh, especially 42 and 48 versus smaller sizes, 18, 24. You have more flexibility in an integrated. Um, because if you want a, if you want a, a 42 inch refrigerator, you can buy two columns of 24 or, uh, I'm sorry, if you want to, if you want a 48, you have two columns, at, uh, you get a 30 and 18, a 24 and a 24, and you can put them anywhere. Whereas, um, the professionals, one unit dispensers, you get one unit. Um, you can't get as many on the integrated side and you get colors in the professional, but it's really a, a, a game of looks, um, of how you want the refrigerator to look. The price per cubic foot, because the professional is a counter depth, so it's a little bit deeper. So you do get a little bit more cubic footage than you do in the integrated, but the price per cubic foot is about the same. 
Another nice feature, they get the, the thermal riser pushed open door, your hands are fully push the door and it opens up that way. But really when we look at integrated, we're looking at design flexibility. Really there's, there's two market leaders. Um, one would be Thermador, they have a new one with stainless steel. They have customizable bins, a really neat kind of micro processing unit where you could control more of the refrigerator functions. And then they have the one, two free of um, you buy the refrigerator and stove, you get a free uh, dishwasher and a free hood when they have it, or they'll give you a credit towards something else. It's a little less expensive. You know, the 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 the, the probably the quality design leader is still sub zero with their vacuum seal, their air scrubber that we mentioned, you know, the better shelving with nanotechnology in it, and you know, magnetic crystal bins. It's really designed to keep air out, to keep food fresher for a longer period of time. Not to be undone, the, the, the brand that's really that's really performed the best during the pandemic is LG and, and SKS is their upper brand. Um, SKS, uh, it will give you more volume per, will give you more cubic foot uh, for, for an integrated. They also pioneered the inverter compressor. They settled a class action suit in 2019 and must have perfected it somewhere afterwards. Um, uh, an inverter uses less uh, parts so fewer things tend to go wrong with them. For, they've been number one for liability, at least based on our service calls for the last couple of years. And then you have Fisher Patel, which is a really interesting company with a lot of cutting edge products, decent sizes, low prices. And again, these are just four. Montegrin will make them Viking, will make a Dayquil, will make it this. There's, there's plenty of other companies that do manufacture column. Now, one word of caution, installing these isn't easy. Like if we look at this picture, if this isn't installed right, and someone really pulls on the refrigerator and freezer, all the weight's on the top. So you really want that tethered well. Uh, integrated, putting panels on, is it seems to be a work of art and science. A lot of contractors are pushing back on it. Next year, because we find ourselves going back a lot to fix installations, we're offering them install. If you buy it from us for $99, it'll save us you know, the service liability on the other side. So something to consider that, Delivery of an 800 pound refrigerator and um, an installation is, is is not that easy. So let's get into wine storage and then we're gonna go <clears throat> more into under counters. But wine's a little different because it's actually living. Wine is a living grape trapped in a bottle. I promised you another picture of the true. Here it is. This is the cobalt and polished. I think some of the stuff's cool. I like the white and black too, but you're gonna get wine in um, if you're specking kitchen in three different ways. You can get it with a wine with refrigerator drawers below for a bar, perhaps. Um, under counter is the most popular, it's the middle. And then you could buy wine columns in, in different sizes, 18, 24, 30. I'm not sure about 36, but I know it's 18, 24, and 30 inches wide. Now, really what you want, want what you want a wine cooler to do is to, to store wine, obviously. Now, when I first started in the wine craze hit, a lot of companies, what they did is uh, they took their existing refrigerator through a, a glass door on it, through some shelving and called it wine, but wine gets affected by the way it's treated. So when you clunk out wine, the vibration will change the way it's supposed to taste. And you need to have an e, you need to have a low E door to refract that light so it doesn't destroy the wine. A lot of the old wine coolers would put a light bulb in the middle, which is exactly what you don't want to put a a light in a heat source in the middle of a, of, of a wine cooler. So you want to, you want to make sure that most of them have, have most, most of them have redeveloped um, their wine units, but you want to make sure it's two level, two distinct level. The, the other thing is what a lot of companies do is say it's two levels when it's really one that throws the cold air up, it comes down. So it's two different temperatures, but it's not as precise. The other thing is you want better shelving. So when you pull it out, it's smoother so it doesn't vibrate. You obviously want the, the light source to be low voltage and not right over the over the wine the the three best is really sub-zero did the best job because in in the early in 1994 they designed they designed a unit around wine <clears throat> so they were the first with two distinct zones they were the first to have a low e door you know they still are one of the only ones that have put their compressors on rubber grommets when it turns on it's and shake the unit but they're they tend to be expensive true is just you know, a sensationally built product, all stainless steel. We have a two zone that's much less expensive with a five year warranty, but you can buy wine, uh, wine storage from a lot of places. Just make sure it's two zone. Um, 
and it's got a low E door and you should be fine. Um, <clears throat> now, any kind of refrigeration. Now, if you're putting your refrigerator somewhere outside the central part and you still feel you need more refrigeration or you want something for the kids, um, there's all kinds of on the counter. There's, there's more now than ever. There's beverage centers, um, which is a combination of wine and, and refrigerator. There's all refrigerator, all freezer. There's drawers of different types. We get an ice makers in a second as well. So you have plenty of opportunities um, to put them, especially in an island type installation. But this is not my house. I could never, I could never, I can never put beer that orderly. Um, but you can do something like this. There's also um, one unit that's half half beverage, half wine that we sell at 24 inch, which is really interesting as well. I should probably put it in the presentation. Mm -hmm. But to give you an idea, this was uh, my old, um, my first renovation um, back in 2014. You know where the refrigerator is. Uh, I put a wine cellar in there because I used to drink wine back then. And then when I had a child, um, I no longer drank as much wine. What I did is I put drawers, um, Man, bad picture, sorry. Um, they're on the, uh, if you look at the sink and you keep going, the drawers are right there. We, we, we put uh, fruits and vegetables. The idea was as she grew up, you know, we put in yogurts or whatever else she liked to eat there and keep her out of the main fridge. Okay, so you have good opportunities. Typically uh, under cadence is, is uh, roughly five, six cubic feet of extra refrigeration or freezer or whatever you think you need. Now, one of the questions we have is freestanding versus under counter. Why is the one on the left 500 and why is the one on the right starting at say 1700? Well, totally different units. Um, one's made out of plastic, one's made out of stainless. Temperature's a little bit different. You get the dial versus the more digital on the right. But really the, the main difference beside the construction is the fact that the one on the right can be put under cabinets in um, between two cabinets under a countertop because the compressor breathes from the front. On, on the one on the left, the compressor's on the back. So what happens over time is excess heat will cause the uh, compressor to seize um, and you'll need to exchange the unit. You know, if you exchange it five times, you're about the side, you're above on the other side too. So, but um, you can also panelize on one, right? It's still built a little bit better as well. So that's the difference between freestanding and kind of, they're really two different types of uh, refrigerators. Which brings us to ice makers, the new hot category that everybody seems to want. Um, you don't buy ice makers as much as you buy the cubes, right? So really, what do you, you know, somebody asked, well, what's the best ice maker? And I, my immediate reply is, um, what are you drinking? Um, I've become fond of the, uh, of the uh, slushy Sonic Cube. We have the GE portable opals in our store. And it's just fun to chew that ice for whatever reason. But if you like finer cocktails, um, the, the clear ice machines uh, do a really good job. They filter out the impurities. I would say that if you're buying an ice maker, there's, there's a couple of different things you have to consider is whatever you buy is you should pump, you should get it with a pump. So it's not a gravity drain. So you pump it to your sink. Um, you get much less service that way. And the other thing is you got to clean them. You got to clean them one or twice a year. Um, so, uh, you got to maintain them or, 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 or they're just not going to last any brand. So here are the key takeaways. I wrote all this stuff down, but what I really mean to say is, um, really assess what you need and really assess your, your, your kitchen plan. Um, and then, and then buy based on that. Again, if you have a larger kitchen, you can go counter depth or you can build it out and then put a secondary point of use refrigeration somewhere. The only opinion I have is um, is built in. I think the built in commercial style look better in stainless. And I think if you're putting cabinets on, I think the integrated that seamless look is uh, a little bit better looking. If you take a look at um, what I did here, that's just what I think. Wait a minute, here's the other picture right here. See, that's the integrated that right here on the right <clears throat> versus the more professional here on the left. So with that, with that in mind, happy holidays, everybody. Any questions we'll, uh, we'll now answer. Thank you, Steve. Um, again, feel free to use the Q&A feature down below to submit any questions, um, <coughs> happy to answer them. Uh, the first one that we have is, my budget is 2,600. I need a French door counter depth refrigerator. What are your recommendations? You can go first. <clears throat> so I'd say, you know, within that price point, definitely have a few options. You know, 
I would two that I would definitely recommend would be Beko that we talked about a little bit earlier. Uh, Beko 36 inch French door counter depth that has the Everfresh and some really nice features like internal water. Um, and also the, the, the new LG 27 cubic foot counter depth will be right in that price point as well. And that's those are two I would definitely consider in that price point. I would say um, <clears throat> if you have time, um, buy before holiday, like Black Friday or um, or President's Day, because I think we're we're going to come back to when everyone promotes. So you may find you could get a um, a, a cafe around that price, and they've got some good features. And also, cafes got service. Um, and if you're in an area where 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 your store doesn't have service, I think G is a good bet. I like the profile for that reason as well. And I do think LG's got the most um, varied refrigerators. Now, for whatever reason, we're not um, Samsung people anymore. You know, if, if your store has service, then, then Samsung is another good consideration. But um, if they don't have service, I mean, you got to buy, whatever you buy Samsung, there's got to be a service department around it because can't, they can't handle it directly. But they get good refrigerators too. Thank you, Steve and Fran. The next one is what built in French door bottom freezer, panel ready 42 inch with refrigerator, is a good competitor to sub zero and cost to less? <laughs> yeah, for 42 inch French doors, there's not really a, a lot of options there right now today. You know, there's a lot of brands and manufacturers that are redoing their lineup, like a Thermidor and ones like that, that will definitely have more options kind of later next year. Sub-Zero is definitely the best in that 42 inch French door, really kind of hands down, you know, like a, a Gen Air kind of is an option, but really two really different types of refrigerators where the Sub-Zero is that dual compressor and, you know, the, the Gen Air really is not. Um, you know, very different types of refrigerators, 42 inch side by side, definitely a lot of really good options there, like brands like SKS and Studio definitely have some less expensive options, especially in the studio line. But French door definitely is a little bit more limited, at least today it is. You, you know, you know, I'm not a big side by side fan, it, but at 42 inch, it starts to work because it's big enough for both. So I wouldn't be afraid of a side by side. That said, I'd go and visit a store and take a look at that side by side refrigerator. I'm not a I'm not a Gen Air fan only because when 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 the new product and the new features in the city and interior, when when you really need to update your um, um, you know your 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 inner workings, your internals, I don't think that's really a, a good message. But I, I do think you know certainly uh, Sub Zero kind of dominates that particular niche. A panel forty two front French door. There are other companies, you know, we don't carry Viking and they they may be getting better. that uh, refrigeration was always their Achilles heel, but um they they redesigned it, and maybe that's a consideration as well. While we are talking about built-in refrigerators, this question was just submitted. It is what is the timeline for built-ins and integrated options at this time? It depends on the manufacturer. I think Sub-Zero, you're still talking a year. I think Thermidor, you're still talking a year. I think Mila, you're they're not even making them for another six months. Um, you know, um, when we talk about pandemic buying, we talk about where we are now. I think for commodity stuff, like regular French stores, washers, dryers, dishwashers, we're fine. Um, but the premium people still are way behind. And what you do is if you're starting a new renovation is you buy your appliances as you, it, the first party renovation before you even have foundations, because it'll take about a year to get them, maybe even longer in Sub-Zero's case, but you'll get it, you'll, you'll have them when you need them. So that, that would be my recommendation, but I, I don't think you're going to get any good news from anybody on that. Okay. Our next question has two parts. First, what is the best ice maker in a refrigerator? Good friend. So in a refrigerator, you know, again, I, I kind of go back to those LGs because they're kind of cool and a little bit different. And, you know, really in a counter depth refrigerator, you know, you're pretty much going to get standard crescent type ice. So most will give you kind of the option of cubed or crushed kind of to have either or. You know, in some of the LG models, they have the um, kind of that craft ice, like you talked about, the large balls of ice that are really cool and a little bit different. So that kind of serves as a dual ice maker in some of those LG models. 
So if you're doing any sort of drinks or something like that, just something a little different and kind of cool that's out there too that you don't really see in, in anything else. So I'm kind of like freestanding counter depth like that. I would say the LG is kind of uh, the most unique out there and kind of gives you a little bit more flexibility than some of the others on certain models. Well, I agree. I think, um, I mean, it's it's pretty much the same um, until you get to a clear ice machines, um, but none of them offer clear ice on a, on a freestanding, but you do get the, the, the um, that craft ice cube. Uh, I mean, I don't know when, what, when everybody became a scotch drinker all of a sudden, but what the heck you don't want your ice to slowly dissolve and whatever drink you're having, you may as well get the craft ice cube mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and LG is the only one that has it. Awesome. Uh, next is what is the best under counter ice maker? Depends on what, 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 what you're, what you put, it, it depends on what you're trying to cool. I, I think for um, soft drinks, lemonades, that type of thing. I, I like the slushy cube. I think if you live in Massachusetts, just go to the stores and grab a cup of that slushy G opal cube and see if you like it. And the better, the better drinks, um, I would say the clear ice cubes. Um, and then you pick the brand based on the ice cube. I like the true kind of like barrel cube, you know, it really depends. Yeah, topics, the, the type of cubes is definitely a very um, hot, de hotly debated topic. Uh, we did, you know, we did an episode on appliance advisors really all about ice makers. Oh, most of it was all about ice makers, really all about under counter. But, you know, when you get to the ice cubes, it's really kind of one of those preferences where you like that barrel cube, the smaller nugget ice, like you said. Some are definitely better for certain types of drinking and things like that. But yeah, very uh, a personal choice I've found is the uh, type of ice cube that you like. But the nice thing is you can definitely, especially if you're in our area, you can go into the stores, you can check them out and really see what those cubes look like for sure. And then our next question is, do you need to pay special attention to the hinges and door mounts with the panels integrated refrigerators? So really, yeah. Okay, I think what they're saying is, are you putting it up against a door? Or I think most of them are articulating hinges at this point. Um, are you talking about uh, for a doorway or or the refrigerators? The, the hinges typically open on themselves. It's not like a uh, a freestanding or a pro that that um, that the 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 the, the, the hinges open up against where you need extra cubic footage. Yeah, depending on the brands, you know, like a Sub-Zero definitely will kind of stay within itself. A Thermidor may open up a little bit wider with the bigger hinges. So if it's like you said, Steve, more of a question on where exactly it's being, if it's close to a wall, you know, certainly some brands you may need a little bit more spacing than others. So yeah, I would definitely say, you know, definitely say that to pay attention to it, especially considering where, you're, where in the kitchen it's going to go. Thank you. And then the next one is favorite drawer or under counter refrigerator for secondary storage for family. If the fridge needs to be small, is, if, excuse me, <laughs> if the fridge needs to be of smaller size, counter depth. Um, are we talking about under cabinet or are we talking about? Let's see. Are we talking about just regular? <clears throat> it seems like under counter. So either a drawer or under cabinet. Well, it all depends what, what you like and what you're storing, uh, whether it's a beverage, the most popular is beverage center because it's, it can do everything. And then the second best is the drawer. I happen to like the drawers myself. I, I happen to like our drawers because, you know, they're stainless and they're fairly inexpensive. But once again, you know, the market leader is Sub-Zero in that category. Um, you know, True's all stainless, they're solid. And, you know, there's other companies that do make it. You want to just check the manufacturing of that. I wouldn't go with like an off-brand, but, you know, there's plenty of good drawers um, and they're all integrated pretty much. Thank you. Next one is, I want to buy the Yale undercounter refrigerator, but it's not available in my area. What other undercounter refrigerators would you recommend? Um, really depends on the, on the, on the, on the, um, on the price, where you are, what can get fixed. You know, the, the, the market leader, when I was, <laughs> when I started here, you know, I had to keep thinking about was actually Marvell and it's still fine. Um, that came, you know, their division middle be now, um, they're not bad. 
you know, again, market leaders, Sub-Zero True, they may be a little, they may be a little bit out of budget there. Um, but I don't mind the Marvel U line types. They're, they're the same thing now. They're owned by the same company. Um, I like ours better because I think, you know, uh, Dennis designed them better and he put a five year warranty on them. But but other than that, though, some of the other ones are, are, are OK. The Gen Air and KitchenAids are OK. Um, yeah, I wouldn't mind any of those. Yeah, no question. If you're looking at like drawers, you know, getting kind of unique ones like an SKS makes kind of a, a pretty cool, unique one where you kind of have convertible fridge, freezer drawers. And you can kind of change those up a little bit kind of based on what you need more. So, yeah, definitely a lot of options out there, depending on exactly what you're looking for and budget. Awesome. The next question is what I think this is for you, Steve. <laughs> Why do you not like the Samsung Bespoke <laughs> in Family Hub refrigerators? Uh, again, um, okay. First of all, I'll tell you why I'm not a big Family Hub fan. I, I do like it. And for someone who's, um, I, I, I know from now on never to say never, right? Because there's always a certain type of person that'll want something. Because the whole idea that your family is going to interact on a refrigerator, maybe there are some, but to me, what makes a family hub, um, and, and listen, I'm all for innovation, and I'll qualify that by saying Samsung makes beautiful appliances, and they elevated everybody else's game. And for that, everybody's kitchen is better because of Samsung. However, I do think they over-engineer, and I do think that I, I don't think people are going to meet on their refrigerator. I think that this, which updates automatically while you sleep, this is the way you're going to interact with your kids. It just is. So I, I don't think you need it on your refrigerator. That said, you know, if you can use the functionality, I've seen some of the videos with the, the guys geeking out on it. If, you, if you're one of those type of people, it's great for you. As far as the bespoke, uh, once again, I have no problems with the line. And I think in a galley kitchen where you want to put color on one product and everything is kind of compact, I don't have a problem. I, I don't think it's a problem, but when you talk about putting color on something and, and that's going to be a central point, it's always the stove. The stove's always central, but the stove and a color, um, the refrigeration, the refrigerators last uh, for color. That said, you can do it in galley or you can do it as a, as, a, as a visual, but the central visual, if you're trying to get a pop of color, is the stove. However, if you're buying Blue Star, you can buy a whole matching suite of whatever the thousand colors they have, match that, match the handles too. Or if some some reason, I, I didn't even know there was a thousand colors available. If there's another color that you should happen to have, you can customize it and put it on theirs as well. So th that's it. It's, it's not like don't buy it or it'll break. It's just, I just think it's just engineered wrong. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Fran? Yeah, I agree. And especially with the bespoke, you know, the one thing, it's a cool concept. And the other part that's tough sometimes is when there's, you know, parts needed to kind of change the colors and who's going to do the install. And if you want to change it, are those parts available again in a year or two years down the line? So those are some of the things that we always think about here. It's really kind of the service and the install part of it too, because it seems cool and it seems really easy. And usually when it seems cool and easy, it's not so easy to do. And, you know, we, we look back a couple of years later, it's like, well, now you can't get that part. And if, now if you want to replace the color or change it, you can't really do that. Um, LG is actually coming out too, again, with something, you know, really to two innovative companies here, the two, two uh, that have really kind of led that kind of the new tech into the appliances. They're doing something similar where you can kind of change parts of the color of the refrigerator, except with them, it's all digital and it's you all do, through your yeah. phone. It's all, it's all done. It's, it's a stainless fridge that you yeah. can make color with an app on your phone. Exactly. Yeah. The other thing is anytime one of your main colors is black stainless steel, when, 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 when it's a universal, that, that, that oxide finish always peels. Mm -hmm. I mean, that thing should be discontinued. It's one of their main, it's still one of their main finishes and bespoke. I just don't, I, I don't get it really. I mean, people are so unhappy. We, we depreciated $23,000 of the French door refrigerators five years ago, proving how easy it is to scratch. So, Okay, so that brings us to our last question. What's the best counter death model and brand that you both would recommend? 
Yeah, I would say, you know, it's hard to pick up. A lot of it, again, I'd say depending on exact features and if you like having that external drawer or not, or like a four door or just a typical three door French door. But, you know, really Bosch makes some really good counter depths and a lot of different uh, kind of configurations where you have those dual compressors. Those are really, really nice. LG line in the baseline LG, they make really good products and studio um, Becca as well. So I'd say, you know, there's really a lot of options here in French door. And I wouldn't say there's really a one size fits all because one definitely depends on, you know, certain height restrictions, if there's any there, but certainly configuration. And really, if you like the internal water, if you don't care about the water, the types of ice, again, the external configuration, all those things I would say really go that would depend on kind of the, the best fit for you. But those brands, like I said, a, a Beko, a Bosch, um, the LG and the studio line, really some really great options there. GE as well. You know, I'm looking at this picture and now I don't wonder, now I, now I don't wonder why kids are, are afraid of clowns. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Again, I just echo it. I, 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 I've never taken a, you know, maybe that's why I got trapped by saying never, but I, I never take one size. Mm -hmm. Are you, when are you buying? What else are you buying? Because again, um, you know, if you can package it out and save five hundred dollars, that does change things when you're talking about a two thousand dollar appliance, right? Um, I do like LG because it's the most reliable, and and you know we just finished the reliability post; it's the most reliable again. Um, and that said, qualifying by saying we didn't sell it in two thousand nineteen, a previous one they were perfecting the inverters, but they they seem to have done so. Um, I'd certainly look at price. I, I like the G line. I mean, for people. That are buying from stores without service because there's a lot of zip codes out there that I don't recognize on this. Um, certainly, G's got to be a consideration because at least you know you're going to get it fixed. Um, I like the LG, you know, Becca was cute and kind of interesting. Um, and you got a lot of other things. And you know, President's Day, go out, shop, take a look at the features and the prices, and and, and buy what's best for you. Really, I, I don't have a, a favorite really to speak of. That was our last question. So thank you everyone for joining us in today's webinar. Hope you all have a great day and happy holidays. All right, thank you. See you guys later.